Okay. So uh, with us, or uh, there are a few fifth graders as well, as well as a few sixth and seventh grade graders. But it doesn't matter. Uh, we will always learn. The process of learning never ends, and we always learn whenever we sit together to learn something. So, inshallah, for uh, welcome to the world of chemistry. Okay, chemistry, as the name suggests, is the study of chemicals. Okay, chemicals, what substances are made up of, right? Whatever you see around you, starting with this piece of paper, book, table, your cell phone, your gadget, you yourself, everything, everything that you can touch, that you can see, that you can smell, that you can feel, whatever. I mean, the five senses that you have, if anything, you if you can observe something, that that thing is made up of matter. And matter is made up of atoms. What does the word atom mean? What does the word atom mean? Atom means, uh, atom is uh, derived from a Latin language, atomos. It means uncuttable. It is the smallest particle that any substance is made up of. Okay, uh, so atom is a Latin word, atomos. It has been derived from the word atomos and it means uncuttable. Okay, so the smallest particle that anything is made up of is an atom. Now, around us, there are 92 different types of naturally occurring substances. 92 different types of naturally occurring substances. Now, humans have artificially tried to make uh, a few other substances, but I'm talking about the naturally occurring ones. There are 92 different types. What I mean by that is that those substances are, are absolutely pure, meaning that you, under normal circumstances, under ordinary chemical reactions, you cannot break those substances down into any simpler substance. Okay, those are called elements. Those are called elements. For example, you have gold, right? The gold jewelry, gold. Now, gold, you cannot by any chemical reaction, you cannot break gold down into any simpler substance. So gold in itself is pure. It's an element. Now, each element contains only one type of atom. It's just like saying that, um, it's just like saying that, you know, this paper, this paper is just made up of paper. Okay, it is, it is not made up of plastic. It doesn't have any plastic mixed with it. It doesn't have any steel mixed with it. It is just simple paper. So in the same way, a substance is like pure. It does not have any other element combined with it. That pure substance is called element, okay? Uh, kids can't join, many kids. Oh, okay. Let me see, uh, wait. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, let me see. Why can't they join? I, I, what's the? Uh, they're asking for password. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll let you know. Okay, wait, wait. Triple two five seven nine is the password. Okay, triple two five seven nine. I don't know how this setting got changed. I am so so sorry about this. Triple two five seven nine is the password. I think this setting got changed. I apologize about this. Uh, okay. 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 Come on here. 
I have allowed all of them. Oh, oh. Where, where do you get this? Okay. Okay, uh, I, I am sorry about that. Okay, so um, where was I? Okay, so let's talk about this atom. Okay, this is the smallest thing which cannot be cut into any simpler substance. What does it look like? Well, nobody has ever seen atom, but recent development, recent research shows that a few scientists have succeeded in getting uh, the real picture of this atom, which is very much similar to what we have been talking about for so many years, for all these scientists have been talking about uh, for so many years. And finally, uh, one or two years ago, some scientists have managed to see the atom, right? Why do we call it the uncuttable? Why do we call it uh, uncuttable? Because Okay, first I will uh, dis uh, talk a little about why is it called uncuttable, okay, and whether it is actually uncuttable or not. Now, if you look at any substance, for example, this is, this is water. I have made these water molecules, okay? These are water mo mo molecules. Molecule means the smallest particle that has the same properties as the whole substance, which in my case is wa water. Now remember, fifth graders and also sixth graders, we have done physical and chemical changes, remember? And I was talking about evaporation and melting and all of that. So what was happening in evaporation was when one of the molecule leaves the liquid surface, right? This is solid right now, but just, you know, it was like about separating molecules, right? Wasn't I talking about separation of mo molecules? So in separation of molecule, I have just separated or taken out one molecule out. I took out one molecule out. So I separated one molecule from the other. That's all I did. And I said that this was physical change. Why? Because no, I'm not, I'm not following any page right now. Shahid, uh, Shahid Farrof, I'm not following any page right now. Just pay attention to what I'm saying. Okay. So I have separated these two molecules, right? So this was I, am, I have not done anything to the molecule itself. I have only separated them. Now, if, if I separate this out, if I separate this hydrogen, this was hydrogen, right, of my water molecule. Now, if I separate this hydrogen away, now I have changed the molecule, right? This is a chemical change. Chemical change is when you change the molecule itself. Molecule is the smallest particle which will have the same physical and chemical properties of that substance. Now, if I take the other hydrogen out as well, right? Now, these are two hydrogen atoms I took out and I do the same with this. I do the same with this. I separate these hydrogen atoms like this and now now first i just separated the molecules that was a physical change because the molecules were intact so if i just separate the mo molecules that is physical change because the molecules are still the same here i have separated the atoms out of the molecules now they can combine together and they can combine together forming hydrogen hydrogen and this would be oxygen now the molecule has changed can you see the molecules are not the same. This was the original molecule and now they have turned into this. So this is different. So this is a chemical change. But can you see that this is one atom? This is one atom actually. The atom is still intact. And no matter what chemical reaction I do with this atom in the lab, this atom will stay as it is. I won't be able to cut it. I won't be able to do anything to this atom. Why? Because this atom, the particles that make this atom are held together with such a lot of force. The particles that make this atom are held together with such a lot of force. I need really, really high, humongous, massive amounts of energy to break this atom. I won't say it is impossible, 
to cut an atom, but it is nearly impossible. You know, these nuclear explosions, nuclear power, what is it? Nuclear power is, is energy which is released when an atom is a split. That is how much energy is required to cut this atom. Okay, nuclear energy is that energy which can destroy countries and continents. And that is why any country that possesses nuclear energy is considered powerful, right? So that much energy is required to cut this atom. And this nuclear energy, by the way, has been only recently developed. So until then, this atom was uncuttable. It is still uncuttable under normal, ordinary circumstances. So that is why this atom is called uncuttable. Now let's talk about its structure. Yeah, I can see students raising their hands. I will take your questions, but first let me finish what I'm trying to say. Okay. So atoms, basic structure in this, you, what you have to remember is that it has a central nucleus. Nucleus, uh, this term might not be new for you. You must have uh, come across this term before in cells, in biology maybe. Uh, this nucleus is the central part and it is made up of two types of particles. I have shaded one particle red, red in my, in my lectures, red, Red dot stands for a proton, positively charged, okay? So protons, positively charged, they are called subatomic particles. Subatomic particles, these are subatomic particles. Subatomic means within the atom. Subatomic particles means within the atom. So these red shaded particles are protons, which are positively charged. Blue shaded particles are, elect, uh, sorry, neutrons, which are neutral. Neutral meaning they have no charge, positive or negative. They, are, they do not have any charge. Then we have these negatively charged particles and they are ne uh, called electrons, okay? Okay, now these electrons are revolving around this nucleus just like planets revolve around the sun. I, I hope you guys remember the solar system. I hope you guys remember the solar system. So these electrons revolve around the nucleus just like planets revolve around the sun. Okay? And these electrons are buzzing around this nucleus like some, you know, extremely high, super fast. Uh, bees, okay, they are, they are revolving so fast you cannot even see them, okay? And don't think that atom actually looks like this. Somehow it looks like this, but this, this is our best educated guess after the results of experiments, okay? And now recently some scientists claim that they have seen it, okay? So uh, they, one atom is so small now let me give you an idea of how small an atom is. You know, a normal piece of paper, a normal piece of paper. Can you see its thickness? Can, can, you, can you see the thickness of this paper? How thin this is? Let me, yeah, how thin this piece of paper is. Now this thickness, this thickness, I'm talking about this thickness, is made up of, one million atoms lined next to each other in, in columns, like this. Many atoms lined next to each other this way, in a column, this way. Millions of atoms together make this thickness of paper. That's how small an atom is. That's how small an atom is. So you can, it's very hard to get your mind around how small the atom is. Okay, and that's exactly why it is uncuttable. Okay, now the basic characteristic features of an atom are the chemical reactions that we deal with in chemistry. They involve electrons only. The nucleus never, remember, the nucleus never ever participates in any chemical reaction. And that is why it is uncuttable by any ordinary chemical reactions. It is always the electrons which participate, okay? Now, 
this nucleus uh, just stays there. Okay, it has positively charged protons and neutral neutrons. Now we understand that electrons give negative charge, protons give the positive charge to the atom, but what about these neutrons? What's the function of these neutrons? Now the function of neutrons is that it contributes to the mass of the atom. It contributes to the atomic mass, the mass of this whole atom, okay? And it also helps keep the positively charged protons together within the nucleus. Now, you must have uh, studied this and you must be already knowing this, that like charges repel, right? Like charges, similar charges, they repel and opposite charges attract, right? Now these protons are all positively charged. These red shaded particles, they are positively charged. Now, if they are all positively charged, how come they are confined to such a small space? How come are they confined in such a small space? Aren't they repelling each other? Now, the thing is, they might be repelling. Yes, they are repelling each other, but it is the presence of neutron which is decreasing their repulsion and keeping them together, okay? And keeping them together, okay? Um, okay, and then these electrons. Now, I just talked about the mass, right? The atomic mass is the sum of the protons and neutrons. Okay, when we talk about the mass of the atom or what is the size or what is the mass of an atom, we only consider the protons and the neutrons within the nucleus, okay? We do not contribute, we, we do not uh, consider these electrons. Another thing that I wanna mention about this atom before I proceed on is that this note, uh, uh, Think of this nucleus as a grape. Think of this nucleus of the atom as a grape. And these electrons are a mile away from that grape. Can you imagine? Try to imagine. This is a grape. You know how, 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 how big a grape is? A grape is this much. A grape is this much. These electrons are a mile, mile away from the grape. So basically, uh, most of the atom is just empty space. Most of the atom is just empty space. Okay, I want you to appreciate that fact. Can everybody hear me? Because I'm constantly getting this uh, complaint that uh, students cannot hear me. Okay, um, okay. So uh, uh, when we talk about the mass of an atom, remember it is only the mass of proton and neutron. Yeah, okay, thank you very much, Shahid. Okay, um, why is it that we are only adding proton and neutron? Why is it that only proton and neutron contribute towards the mass of an atom and why not the electrons? Now, for that, we have to look at what is the size or what is the weight of one proton or one neutron? Now the weight of one proton or one neutron is this. Sorry about this. Point, this is point. Point these many zeros, one, six, seven grams. That is a mass of one neutron or one proton. By the way, they have the same mass. They are similar in their sizes and weight. Protons and neutrons are similar in their sizes and weight. And this is how much one proton or one neutron weighs in grams. I'm talking in grams, okay? I can write it. Yes, good job, Javeria. Yes, good job, yes. Okay, so, uh, so, you know, this is such a difficult, this is such a tedious, this is such a, an inconvenient number to deal with. How will we deal with so many points, zero, 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 you know, in our calculations, that will be a lot of work. 
they came up with this scientific no notation, an easier way, a shorter way of writing this. But even this is inconvenient in daily calculations. Yeah, uh, therefore, scientists have now come up with an even easier unit, which is called atomic mass unit. One atomic mass unit is equal to these many grams, which is exactly the same as the weight or mass of one proton or one neutron. Okay. Um, now, compared to this, look at the weight of an electron. Now, an electron weighs 0 0.000549 of that one atomic mass unit, meaning it is these many times tinier than a proton or a neutron. Just a very tiny fraction. So that means an electron weighs a tiny fraction of a proton or a neutron. So the weight of electron is so tiny that it is negligible compared to the weight of proton or neutron. It's just like uh, when you weigh yourself, you do not worry about a, the small ring that you're wearing or a small necklace you might be wearing or your clothes because they weigh so less as compared to your weight, right? So uh, uh, the weight of your clothes or the weight of your ring or your necklace is so small that you can easily safely neglect it and just you know stand on the weighing machine and measure yourself right so it doesn't contribute the electron weight does not contribute much to atomic mass so we can ignore it safely for our calculations okay another thing another reason that electrons are not uh, the weight of electron is not included in the atomic mass is because in uh, reactions, electrons get exchanged. It is the exchange of electrons. In chemical reactions that we will be, that you guys will be dealing with in chemistry ahead, inshallah, it's all about electron exchange. All the reactions are about giving and taking electrons between atoms. I mean, nucleus does not participate. Nucleus stays there. It doesn't do anything. It's the electrons. It is the giving and taking of electrons. Some atoms like to give, others like to gain, right? So these electrons do not stay within the atom. So the number of electrons is variable. It keeps changing according to the reaction. Sometimes they're gaining, at other times they're losing. Sometimes they're losing one, at other times they're losing two electrons at the same time. And at other times they're gaining one electron, so two electrons, so that is variable. Therefore, we do not uh, uh, include the weight of electron while we are measuring the atomic mass, okay? Okay, so you know that we talked about, is there any point that I missed? Okay, another thing, okay, now, each substance or each element is due to that type of atom, right? Each substance or each element is because of that atom. Like that element is that element because of that type of atom it is made up of, right? You are what you are made up of. Now, scientists have arranged these atoms of different elements in a particular sequence. And that sequence is called periodic table. Okay, they have, uh, let me now share uh, my screen with you. Let me show you, let me show you a periodic table. Okay. Uh, This is the periodic table I got. Well, you can have, you can also pull out a periodic table um, from Google. Okay, it's not that hard. Periodic table is available in Google and you can find it in books as well. It's there in chemistry for you as well. So this is the sequence uh, in which chemists or scientists have arranged all the elements. Okay, and this is according to their Proton number, proton number. Now let's talk about this proton number a little more in detail. 
you know like how in exams you use your name as well you as well as you are also given a, a roll number right you have a name but you are also given a roll number in the same way elements have their names but they are also given a number their identification number they are given an identification number and that identification number okay let me take out the periodic table for you now keep your eyes on the screen yeah this is a messy periodic table i'm sorry about that but this is page number 392 of chemistry for you okay this is the arrangement of periodic table okay so this arrangement is according to their proton number proton number is like that roll number is that identification number that scientists have given to each of these atoms okay it is not the neutron number it is not the mass it is not the number of electrons it is the number of protons okay i will just appreciate that this is the arrangement of substances okay of see this sequence is called a periodic table this is called a periodic table of the elements okay now how are they arranged let me talk about it in detail uh here see these are different atoms this is nitrogen oxygen fluorine right now how are the different can you see the difference lies in their number of protons okay that's the proton is their roll number the proton is their identification number remember nitrogen is nitrogen because it has seven protons okay that that is used as its identification number now if it is neutral if it is neutral neutral meaning the atom overall does not have any charge okay if the atom does overall does not have any charge that means the number of positive and negative charges should be equal it should be equal right is it blurry or is it clear i'm trying to zoom in okay so these red dots within the nucleus are protons so if it has seven protons and we we i just mentioned that protons are positively charged right so we have seven positive charges we have seven positive charges okay now if it is neutral if it is neutral overall charge should be neutral overall charge should be zero right for that i should have minus 7 right same number of negative charge i should have same number of negative charge so therefore atoms have the same number of electrons if it is neutrally charged if it is neutrally charged atom will have the same number of negatively charged electrons as the number of positively charged protons within the nucleus so let's count if it has seven protons it should have seven electrons one two in the in the innermost orbit one two electrons in the second orbit three four five six seven seven electrons together okay now i will also talk about what are these circles what are these circles these circles are not any structure okay these are not these are not structures anymore okay they are just orbits they are just pathways of electrons they are just orbits or they are just pathways of electrons now remember the innermost pathway or the innermost orbit which is the closest to the nucleus can only have two electrons at a time can have only two electrons the innermost orbit or the innermost level can have only two electrons at a time 
okay? Whereas the second orbit, the second orbit, which is second after the first one, can have at maximum eight electrons, eight electrons at the maximum. So the innermost can have only two. The second one can have only eight. And you will deal with only these two shells in your, till O levels, till your IGCSE O levels, you will deal with only these two shells. You might have a third shell, but you won't get any bigger than, you know, one or two electrons in that third shell. You won't go to that extent. And in A levels, an advanced level, you will deal with other shells as well. But in O levels, you will stick to these. Okay, now let's move on to this oxygen. Now, can you see that oxygen is just one proton more than nitrogen? You know, I'm trying to explain you uh, the sequencing of atoms or elements in the periodic table. How have scientists arranged these atoms in the periodic table? It is according to their proton numbers, okay? So let's talk about oxygen. Now its proton number is just one more than nitrogen's. Nitrogen had seven protons, oxygen has eight protons. So the number of protons is only one more than the number of protons in nitrogen atom. Okay, if it has eight protons to be neutral, to be electrically neutral overall, it should have eight negatively charged electrons as well so that the overall charge would be zero. So if it has eight protons, and by the way, you can remember it this way, P for proton, P for positive. P for proton, P for positive. So protons are positively charged subatomic particles. So plus eight, because protons are positively charged and there are eight of them. So plus eight charge. And then for the atom to be neutral electrically, we should have eight negatively charged particles, right? So let's see if, the, if this atom has eight negatively charged particles. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, eight. Okay. Also, notice that as the number of protons is increasing by one, as we are going across this, these atoms, the number of electrons in the outermost shell is also increasing by one. In this case, the number of electrons in the outermost shell is five. One, two, three, four, five. Five electrons in the outermost shell. Here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Now, why, I, why do I want you to notice this? Is because these outermost electrons are the ones which participate in chemical reactions. So there are chemical properties. Chemical properties is, what does chemical property mean? How do these atoms behave with other substances? How do they react with other substances? Will depend upon how many electrons are there in their outermost shell. And that will also determine how scientists position them within the periodic table. Now, this is fluorine. Again, proton number is one more. So if it has nine protons, meaning nine positively charged particles, to be electrically neutral, it needs nine negatively charged particles, which will be electrons. So let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, this is electrically neutral. And I have drawn protons and neutrons within the nucleus. Another point I would like to mention here is that you might be wondering that, okay, in an electrically neutral atom, the number of protons and electrons is equal, but what about the neutrons? What about the neutrons? Now, new, the number of neutrons is almost equal to the number of protons, but not always. Not always, there are exceptions, okay? For example, oxygen, atom may have eight protons as well as eight neutrons. 
but there are variations as well. There are exceptions as well. Same goes for nitrogen. Usually it has seven protons and seven neutrons, but then there are exceptions. Okay, and same is the case with fluorine. Okay. Okay, so now I cannot make the whole periodic table here, but I try to make this first period, the first period, looking at this periodic table, I'm zooming in, the first period, okay, what is a period and what is a group? Another thing. Now, can you see that this periodic table is made up of rows? These are rows, the horizontal, horizontal group of element is called a row. Vertical group of elements are called groups. Okay? Horizontal are called periods or rows periods, rows are called periods, and vertical groups are called groups. Yes, periods are rows, or rows are periods, and columns are groups, okay? And they have named it as group one. This is group one. This whole thing is group one. Group two, okay? These, we will skip them, okay? We will skip them. Group three, this is group three, group four, group five, group six, group seven, and this is group eight or group zero. This is called group eight or sometimes group zero, but there are eight groups. This in the middle, the green colored block is transition. It's called, they are called together transition, transition metals. Okay, but right now we will concentrate on these periods and groups. Okay, we will talk about these later. So don't confuse yourselves, just concentrate on the periods. So the first period, first period is this, meaning first row. First row has only two elements, hydrogen and helium. First period, yeah, hydrogen, some people, put hydrogen in the first group because it has only one electron in its outermost shell. So according to the number of electrons, okay, by the way, the number of group depends upon the number of electrons in the outermost shell of an atom. Like for example, group one will have only one electron in its outermost shell. Group number two will have only two electrons in its outermost shell. Group three will have three electrons in its outermost shell. Group four will have four electrons in its outermost shell. Group five will have five electrons in its outermost shell. Group six will have six electrons in its outermost shell. Group seven will have seven electrons. And group zero, what about this? Group eight will have eight electrons in its outermost shell, okay? I said that separately for each group in order to emphasize so that you do not forget this is very important this will go with you your whole life till you are studying chemistry so hydrogen has only one electron overall it has only one electron so for that matter it should be in the first group but the problem is that group 1 are metals and hydrogen is not a metal, it's a gas. So th for that reason, some scientists do not include hydrogen in the first group, but they just uh, label it or mention it separately at the top, just like this periodic table has done. But in other periodic tables, you will see that some scientists have put this in the first group, okay? But it doesn't matter, you can look at it anyway. So. I, in my explanation, have put hydrogen in the first group, okay? And so let's go on, let's go across this first period all the way. Now, these are the names. These are the names of the atoms, okay? And the names, you see, it's difficult to write their names all the time and every time we talk about them. So scientists have come up with uh, symbols. 
right? So, uh, a symbol is just a short way of writing their names. Most of these symbols have come up, these symbols, you know, this, in these periodic tables, uh, they have used these symbols. They have mentioned their complete name as well, but in many periodic tables, you will just see the symbols. Okay, these symbols have been derived from both Latin as well as English languages. Okay, some are derived from English languages and others from Latin. Okay, the first letter of the symbol is always going to be capital. The first letter of a symbol will always going to be capital. And the second letter, if it has a second letter, will always be small. Some have only one le letter. They do not have a second le letter. Now, when do we need a second letter? When do we need a second letter? For example, carbon has only C, right? But calcium has CA. Now, calcium starts with C and carbon also starts with C. Now, if we give both of them the same symbol, then that would be confusing. No two elements can have the same symbol, then how can we, how will we differentiate between them? So that is when the second letter comes in, because we want to differentiate calcium from carbon. Both of them are starting with C, right? So we will add a small a next to C to denote, to, to represent that we're talking about calcium right now, okay? And same is the case with this boron. Now, boron is B, right? But then we have beryllium. Beryllium, both of them are starting with B. But then in order to differentiate, we will use a second letter, which will be smaller, B, E. No, we cannot add three or four le letters, only two. You can see in this whole periodic table, you will not be able to see more than two letters. And I think that is why they have taken help from Latin language, because if you do not have any two different letters from it for an element, we can always take from another language and they take it from uh, la Latin. And don't worry about learning these symbols. When you keep doing, keep solving chemistry problems, you keep studying chemistry, you will remember the names, just like you remember your friends' names, right? You don't sit there and learn their names and rectify their names, no. But you just learn them because you keep meeting them, you keep seeing them, you keep calling them, you keep using their names. So you just learn them. So same is the case with these symbols. We'll keep talking about them, we'll keep learning and studying about them, and eventually you will learn them. You do not have to learn their atomic numbers, their mass numbers, because this periodic table will always be provided to you during examinations and even during tests. It is allowed to look at a periodic table. The periodic table is always at the back at the last page of your chemistry paper. Okay, so you don't have to worry about learning their proton numbers, learning about their mass numbers, but yes, you should know the pattern. You should know the pattern that the scientists have used in order to arrange these elements in this particular you know, sequence in this periodic table. Now let's get back to what I was trying to talk to you about. So I want you to appreciate that these lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. This is the first period. I've taken these lithium, beryllium, Oh, sorry, this is the second period. I'm so sorry. First period was this, hydrogen and helium. I'm sorry about that. That was the first period. This is the second period. Okay, so this is my first period, hydrogen and helium. This is my first period. And this is my second period, right? Okay. This is group one, okay? I have omitted the transition metals. I have omitted the transition metals, okay? First group, second group, third group, fourth group, fifth group, sixth, seventh, and this is eighth, okay? 
first group, let's see how many electrons in its outermost shell. One and one. These two are in the inner, inner shell. The outer one has only one. In the second group, the outer shell or the outer orbit has two electrons. The third one has three electrons in the outermost orbit. The fourth one has four electrons in the outermost orbit. The fifth one has five electrons. One, two, three, oh, sorry. One, two, three, four, five. This is sixth group, so it should have six. One, two, three, four, five, six electrons in its outermost shell. This is seventh group, this should have seven electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the eighth group or even called zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Another thing I would like to mention here, it helped me a lot uh, when I was a student. When I think of an atom, you know how I think about it? It helped me. I think of this nucleus as the mother and these electrons as the kids, as the children. So these kids always want to be next to the mother, right? They're attracted towards the mother. They love their mother, the mother loves them, right? And if they need anything, they will always come to their mother, right? But as the kids grow up, as the kids grow up, they can take care of themselves, they get more independent, and so they don't need their mother as much. So they get a little farther away from the mother, right? The younger ones who are still young, they cannot uh, fulfill their needs themselves. They need the mother to do that for them. They stick closer to the mother, right? So I think of these electrons that way. These electrons in the innermost orbit or shell, they have the least energy. They have the least energy. They are sticking close, so they are getting pulled more by the positively charged protons within the nucleus. Okay, now these are like older kids. They have greater energy. They are maturer. They are stronger. You can think of them as that way. Or they have more energy, so they can resist that pull. Though they are also getting attracted by the positively charged protons, but they have more energy to resist that pull and be a little farther away from the nucleus, from the positively charged protons, right? And the reason why these electrons are buzzing so fast and is still not flying away out of the atom is because of this attractive pull exerted by these protons within the nucleus towards these electrons. I hope you're getting my point. And by the way, this shell or this orbit is not a structure. You won't see it in the atom on its own, okay? This nucleus is a structure, okay? Electrons are structures, but these shells, these are just pathways. You know how when we use one way uh, very commonly, very frequently, then with the help of footsteps, a, uh, a pathway uh, develops. I mean, there is no construction of road or anything, but because so many people use that way so common that a, a, a pathway develops on its own. So it's the same way because the electrons are using this path frequently in buzzing around the nucleus so fast, we see a pathway, we see a, an orbit, okay? Or we call it a shell, okay? And so uh, some electrons uh, share the same orbit or they share, share the same shell. So these are the innermost electrons which are sharing this innermost shell. And then these are electrons which are, have a little more energy, so they are a little farther away. And for that reason, these shells are also referred to as energy levels. You know, when these are also referred to as energy levels, meaning that the innermost energy level will be the lowest because it has, the electrons have the least energy. This will be a little higher. The energy level of these electrons will be a little higher. Okay. And so this is a higher energy level. Okay. I, I will take questions 
from you guys. Don't, don't you worry. But let me just make sure that I have covered all the points because I don't want to miss any point. Okay. Okay, let me see. Okay, now before I move on, I will take your questions and only 10 minutes are left. So maybe that's all I will be able to talk about, but let's see. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, where is hydrogen in the periodic table? But miss the gases, non-metals and metals are jumbled up as well. Can't we add a three or four, okay. Teacher, if electrons have less weight than protons and neutrons, so how electrons have power? That's a good question, Shaheer. That is such a good question. See, remember, in science, power has nothing to do with size. Sometimes small people are very powerful because of their speed, because of their uh, other faculties, okay? Size doesn't matter. In fact, in fact, if you ask me, the bigger the size, the more inactive a substance. The bigger the size, the most useless those things are. Okay, Hassan, Wali, are you uh, trying to ask a question? Because I can see your hand raised. You want to ask a question? Yes, Hassan? Yes? I've unmuted you. Uh, yes, I actually want to ask a question. Okay. Go ahead. Heather. Yes. Uh, how many electron uh, electrons does it do the transition metals have in the outermost orbit? Since okay. they're between so, group two and three, how many would they have? Okay. First of all, we did not talk about transition metals yet because you see, this is the first class, and there are many fifth graders sitting with us. So I was touching on the basics. So I told you to ignore the transition metals for now. Okay. But these transition metals have a variable number of uh, electrons, okay? It depends upon, I told you, they have third shells. They have three and four shells, okay? Another thing that reminds me, I did not talk about the number of shells. I talked about the number of electrons in the outermost shell, but I forgot to talk about the number of shells which I had drawn here just for that same purpose. So transition metals, electron shells, you will not deal with them in O levels, but yes, in A levels, you will. So wait till you get to A levels, okay, Hassan? Uh, if you will get into the electronic configuration and shells of transition metals, you will be confusing yourself. And just listen to this point, okay? And then I will tell you why transition metals are not your level for now. So number of groups had to do with the number of electrons in the outermost shell, right? I repeated that twice for each group, right? So I hope that point is clear. Now, what does the number of period represent? Like this was the first period, this is the second period, this is the third period, this is the fourth period. So can you see the transition metals come in the fourth period? Transition metals enter in the fourth period so keep that in mind and then i and then i will come back to it first period now number of period is the same as the number of shells i will repeat and i will write it down here number of period represents or you can even say it is equal to the number of shells an atom has a number of shells an atom has. You can even write it down if you want. Number of period represents or is equal to the number of shells an atom has. Shell means energy level. Shell means the orbit. You know that orbit that I was just discussing? The orbit? Yes. Okay. Now, period one has only one shell. Can you see? For example, this is the nucleus, only one shell. Can you see, this is the first period, helium. This is helium. Again, helium and hydrogen, both of them begin with H, but then can you see the scientists have used the second letter E to differentiate it from hydrogen. Hydrogen, by the way, also has only one shell, so it's also in the same period. This is the nucleus and this is the shell. And in the shell, it has only one electron one electron 
we use this symbol for electron, E with a small dash at the top. This means electron, okay? Helium has two electrons in its outermost shell. Okay, so first period, one orbit, one shell. Second period, two shells. I will shade the nucleus so that you don't get confused by the nucleus. Can you see two shells? Yes. Two shells? Yes, we can see. Two shells. All of them have two shells. Appreciate the fact that all of them have two shells. Why? Because all of them are in the second period. Third, how many shells? One, two, three. How many shells? One, two, three, four. Fourth period. And that's the period where the transition metals come in, right? Fourth period. So one, two, three, four. So these transition metals have four shells, four orbits to their electrons. So you're, when you're talking about, Hassan, this is for you. When you're talking about the outermost electrons in the transition metals, you're talking about the fourth shell. You're talking about the fourth shell, the arrangement of which we are not dealing with right now in IGCSE. Okay, so and then so on and so forth. The fifth period will have five shells, the sixth period will have six shells, and so on and so forth. So the number of period will be representing the number of shells or orbits. Okay, okay, what other question have you guys asked? Let me see. Okay, radium is a big atom and it is very radioactive, highly radioactive. So the number of shells vary with the period of that atom, right? What do you mean period of that? Yes, yes, the period. So if you want to find out how many shells an atom has, find out in which period does it lie, okay? If you want to find out in which period an atom lies, uh, you can even count its number of shells if you know the number of shells, okay? So we are almost out of time i wanted to discuss molecules with you but is there any confusion or any question yes moaz yes moaz i can see your hand raised you want to ask a question you want to ask something yes 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 moaz Yes. Is that, how many shells does astrodine have? Does what have? As, how many shells does astrodine have? Astrodine. Uh, can you can you guide me as to where is it? I uh, right I'm now. Thinking, it's it's the it's the it's the last element in group number seven. Oh yeah. So you are asking how many shells? And how many electrons does it have? Electrons? Okay. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll talk about that. Now, okay. Now, one thing that I did not talk about, and her, his question reminded me, is that I told you that when we are talking about the mass, we will talk about, if I want to find out the atomic mass of, let's suppose, if I want to talk about the atomic mass of, let's suppose, nitrogen, okay, for example, nitrogen, okay, 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 let's take astatine, okay, as Moaz, sorry, astatine is T, sorry about that, okay, astatine, by the way, is in group seven at the bottom, right, it is at the bottom, so how many shells do you think it has, period one, two, three, four, five, six, so it has six shells. It has six shells. Good job. Yes, Riaz. It has six shells. Now, atomic, let's talk about its atomic mass. We'll, and then we'll talk about its... So number of... Okay, what are these numbers? I did not talk about this. I'm so sorry about this. See, this is what they wrote, right? Look at this. This. 
the number at the top is the mass number, which is the sum of proton, number of protons and number of neutrons. This is the atomic number. Remember the roll number, the identification number with the help of which we recognize an element or a substance or an atom is its proton number. Okay, sometimes they use these symbols. Okay, so the one written at the top is mass number, the one written at the bottom is the atomic number. Now, don't get confused. Yes, I know, Hassan, uh, the period is over, yes. Uh, 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 sometimes uh, people get confused, but don't be confused. The bigger number, uh, the bigger number is the mass number. Why? Because mass is the number of protons. Those who want to leave are free to leave. Okay, number of protons. I, I won't take long. Just let me make this point. Number of protons and the number of, sorry, neutrons will give us the mass number. Number of protons plus the number of neutrons will give us the mass number. Remember, electrons are too small, so we do not include their weight, right? Now, if I'm talking about astatine, the mass number is the top number, right? The top number, which is 210. 210. Okay, number of protons. How many protons? 85. Remember, the proton number is the number at the bottom. One. Proton number is 85. So, 85. So, and then I can find, I can figure out the number of neutron if I have to. But your question is how many electrons it has. Now, if it is electrically neutral, Remember, electrically neutral, meaning the number of positive charges is equal to the number of negative charges. So if it is electrically neutral, the number of protons should be equal to the number of negatively charged electrons. Okay, so number of protons is 85. So the number of electrons should also be 85. Right? I'm not calculating the number of neutrons you can do that yourself okay we can also do a few questions so that this concept gets you stronger but you should appreciate that atomic mass is the sum of the number of protons and the number of neutrons and for an electrically neutral atom the number of protons should be equal to the number of electrons so this was your first introduction to atom i know these ideas for some students is for the first time you don't have to take it too fast, okay? I will share the pages in the group if you have time and if you are interested, you can read it and then it would be easier for you to understand. Right, okay. So we are out of time. And uh, Moaz, you wanna ask something? Yes, you are unmuted. Moaz? No. Oh, okay. No. Yes. Okay. Uh, Javeria, you want to please, please kindly ask questions from what I'm teaching. Do not go beyond the topic. Okay. Especially when we have fifth grade graders with us. I know a few of you, uh, a few of the students are very enthusiastic and they go beyond the topic, but please stay with others. Okay. Yes. J J J Javeria, you, you want to ask some question? I want to ask like, uh, I don't understand if it's in the topic or not, but uh, when uh, the atomic mass is two times the atomic number, right? Not all the time. You have to see the number of proton and the number of uh, neutrons and then add them. It is not all, all the, all, all, it is not but always. Sorry, right. One more thing I have to ask as I'm reading the uh, periodic table. Uh, what is like this 0.45 like in chlorine yeah, 17? Yeah, I, yeah, we will do that later. Okay, we will do that la later. That's yeah. a very good question. Yes, that's a very good question. We will do that later. Okay. Okay. Any okay, other questions? Yeah, it's okay. Um, Moaz, is you, you want to ask something? Okay, then lower your hand because then you're confusing me. Okay. Then the class is over, inshallah, in the next class, which will uh, be uh, next Sunday, uh, we will do the continuation. We will continue this chapter, okay? And I'm following this book, but I'm not following exactly this book. 
but yes, roughly, I'm, I'm for, for following this book, roughly. Okay, this chemistry for you. And I've tried to do till, I have tried to do till these, uh, yeah, till page 20. I have done till page 20, okay? So next class, we will discuss molecules. We discussed atoms. In the next class, we will discuss molecules, okay? And then tomorrow, I will do a preparation of salts for sixth graders and seventh graders if they are interested, okay? Tomorrow, salt preparation, same time, 4 p.m. till 5 p.m. Okay, assalamu alaikum. Okay, assalamu alaikum. Allah Hafiz. 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 Allah Hafiz.